I'm here from Craft Lab NZ again, and today we're going to show you how to make the most amazing, beautiful <gasps> bird out of harakiku. So again today, the awesome thing is we only need one leaf, which is pretty amazing. So this might be one of my most favorite things to make out of harakiki with only one leaf. So what we're going to do is again really make sure that if you are harvesting harakiki that we're making sure that you know the tikanga behind it and that you're following that protocol guidelines and there's a lot of information out there about that so I suggest you go and have a really good look for that and find what sits with you. Okay, so let's get to it. What's going to happen here is the equipment that we need today is going to be a pair of scissors and also we're probably going to need ourselves four pegs. Four pegs. Okay, so step one is this. Again, I'm going to split the flax a little bit. It actually doesn't really matter this time that we're going to keep that bottom part of the flax that's a bit fleshy because we'll cut it off later. So whenever I split flax, I always try and do it sort of somewhere central. So I'm going to remove that mid rib here. So I'm just going to give that a bit of a pinch. Slide my hand up. Slide that down. I will actually save that because I'll use that bit later. Now again here, it doesn't actually really matter how wide this is today. Kind of up to you. Rather, rather go wider than thinner. So I'm just going to pinch this off here like so, halfway, split that up, split that down, and now I've got my leaf that's still joined, but it's looking nice and trimmed. Now before I split this apart into two separate pieces, all I want to do is this piece here, which is actually both of them, I want to split it four times. Okay, so all I'm going to do is again in that sort of central part here, I'm just going to crack it once, twice, three times. So that actually will give me four splits. Now the reason why I've left these together to do it is it means both pieces are going to have the splits in the exact same spot. So I'm going to now split it just up, all the way up once, twice, three times, which now gives me my four pieces. And if I were to put these side by side, now pretty much these two splits start at the same spot and they're the same width. So now I can split it apart. And now I'm going to show you how we start to build this beautiful bird. All right, so we've got our two pieces here sitting side by side. And it doesn't really matter which one we start with, but I'm going to start with this side here. So what I want to do is I want to bring the far outer right hand side two pieces here and I want to weave them back towards this one. So all that's going to happen with this is what I'm going to do is this one's going to come completely over and it's going to come down. Now what I want it to do is as it comes down it needs to go over the first one but now if I lift that second one up and it goes under there just like so. So that Last one on the far right there has gone over and under, and now that next one on the right is going to also get folded that same direction, and it's going to go over and under. So now, if I was to pick this up and show you, that's what it looks like. So the first piece, and I'll show you one more time just here, nice and close, first piece is going to go over and under under and then that next piece is going to get folded over that one and it needs to come under that one so now that looks like that and I'm like whoa that's pretty cool so we're going to do the same with this one here this one here instead of actually this one coming over it's actually going to start by coming under so this one here on the left hand side the far left is going to come under over and under, and then this one here is going to also come under and over. So now, if we have a little close-up of this one, that's what that one looks like. And I'll show you one more time. So the piece on the far left is going to come under and over and under, just like so. And then this piece is going to come under and over just like that. So now the cool thing is, is these actually are our wings. So now if I keep these in position, but I now turn them and I lay them like this, this is starting to build the beautiful wings of our bird. 
So if I try to now connect these ones here, I should just be able to follow the pattern. So this one, because it's going under, it needs to go over and under, and this one needs to go under and over. And if I pull that nice and tight, I get this beautiful, beautiful little weave here. And I can see that the top of both of my wings are nice and straight. So this is a great time to utilize a peg. So once that top's done, I'm gonna spin it around. And again, looking at this one, this one here is going over, so it needs to come under and over. And this one here is under, so it needs to go over and under. And again, I'm gonna pull that nice and tight and use a peg. So now you can see I've got this beautiful, beautiful little weave that is holding that. Now at this point here, what I want to do is now I want to fold it down and I want to put it back down on the ground like so. And all I'm going to do is now I'm going to join these two pieces together. Now the way that I'm going to do that is I definitely do need to have a couple of pegs on hand. All I'm going to do is I'm going to take the top left one and the top right one. And for me, this top left one is just going to get folded and it's going to come over that right one which means my next left one needs to come under, which means my last one on the right needs to go over and under. So it's a really simple little pattern that looks just like that. So I'll show you one more time nice and close. So two one, top left, top right. This one's going to come over and I'm just going to hold that in position there. This one's going to come under and then this one's going to come over and under. At that point there, I want to peg, peg this here. And I can peg it kind of any way. Maybe I'll actually bring my peg in from the top there. So you can see now I've got this really cool two little kind of loops or hoops that are holding that together. So I'm going to spin this around and I'm going to do the same to the tail. Exactly the same. So the left one and the right one, left's going to sit on top of the right. The next left one's going to come under, which means our final piece there is going to come over under, grabbing a peg, pegging it there, and going, woohoo! So currently, this is what it looks like. We've got this awesome little, kind of looks like a bird, kind of looks like a basket. So the next step now is I'm going to grab these two pieces here, and these pieces at the front, so this would be considered to be the front of our bird, these pieces here are actually going to end up being the tail. So I'm going to put all these pieces together at the front here, and I've kind of got the tips together there, and all I'm going to do is I'm going to put all of them through that big loop heading towards the back. So that's great. If you have a little look there, all I've done is got all of those little loops there and I've put it through the back. Now what I'm going to do is I've at the back I've got two on this side and I've got two on this side. They're going to come through the front and all they're going to do when they come through the front is they're going to come inside the body and then they're going to come out where my thumb is. So I'm going to put these ones inside the body and then out that pit there and then these two pieces here are going to come across, they're going to come inside the body and again they're going to come out through the front there. So I've kind of got this awesome thing now that I can pull and almost tie in a knot. So at the moment now, these pegs need to move because they're kind of in my way. So now I can start to very gently dress this. Super cool. So I'm at that point now that I've put those two pieces together and I pulled it sort of nice and tight. So all I'm going to do is now we can sort of see that this looks like the direction that the wings want to be. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to gather all of this stuff coming out of here which is going to be considered to be my neck and I'm going to hold it all together and try and get those pieces so they're all lined up, four pieces stacked on top of each other and all I'm going to do is tie an overhand knot. So I'm going to wrap it around my two fingers and then I'm going to bring it down. Just like so. So I'm going to hold this like so, so I've got an overhand knot. Now the idea here is what I'm actually trying to do is I'm trying to create something that looks like a kind of a long neck 
and then I've got a knot where the head's going to be. So at that point there, I'm going to grab some scissors, and this is how I'm going to make my beak. So if I was to hold this here, and I was to give that a nice sharp snip, all of a sudden now I've made something that looks like a pretty cool beak. So, that's the head done. Now I can kind of see that these wings look really, really big. So if I was to fold both wings up just like so, and hold it like that, now I can kind of give them a bit of a cut. And I can get really decorative on this. I can cut it so there's lots of little bumps in it. Like so. So you can sort of see I've done a little few bumps there. But now, if you sort of see this now, we're kind of starting to look like an amazing, beautiful bird. Now one thing I like to do with all these tail feathers is I like to split them. So I'll split these a few times. So pretty much splitting those four pieces probably into about eight pieces. And then another really cool thing to do is if you run it over the back of a scissor, some pair of scissors, so I'm just holding that and pulling it, much like you'd probably do with some ribbon to get it all twisted and curly, I can start to get this beautiful, you can sort of see now I've got this beautiful sort of wispy little tail feathers. So we're really, really close now. Purely just to make this and go, woohoo, I've done it. But the next step is showing you how we're going to actually make like a little cradle or a little tripod that we can tie on this guy so he can start to fly. So, I'll show you the next step. So the finishing stages are, what we need for the finishing stages, you remember at the beginning when we were sizing our flax, we kind of ripped off some of that mid-rib they call it. So we've got a couple of little pieces here that are quite thin and quite long. And I've actually just found a little scrap piece of this flax here that's quite fleshy. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to peel off a piece of this, so it kind of looks like that. And I'd say that's probably about as wide as a toothpick. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to snip it, so it's maybe about that long. Okay, so not very big. I need a couple of these, so that's one there. I could use a little stick for this if I wanted. But for me, I reckon this one works pretty well. So I've got a couple of these little things. What's going to happen is on my little bird, I'm pretty much going to pick sort of somewhere around about the central part here. So it's pretty important that we try and get this position right so that the weight, you know, if we, if we do it too far back, then the bird will want to be facing down or too far forward and he'll be facing the sky. So all I'm going to do here is round about this halfway point of the leaf, I'm just going to very carefully do like a little crack, okay? I haven't split it too far, so on the other side I'll do the same. So tiny little crack each side, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to get one of my pieces of my really nice long bits of harakiki, and I'm going to really carefully try and put that end through here, so I'll show you that. So if we now have a look at the bottom, I've got my one single piece of string here, Okay, my bit of harakiki, and you'll notice that I've just put it through each side there, and then on the bottom, I've tied two really loose little knots. So inside that knot, before I pull it tight, I'm just going to slide this other little piece. So that little piece that I made, that I cut off earlier, is going to get slid inside here, and I'm going to pull that nice and tight. So I'll just do that one here. Excellent. So once that's pulled nice and tight there, you'll actually see that this now, when I pull this back, that's going to be a really awesome little stopper. So I'll quickly do that to the next one. Woohoo! This is so cool, Kay. So now I've got those two little stoppers in there, and if I was to hold this bird, I'll kind of see now that he's diving down a bit, but we can actually fix that. So I do have one more other little piece. So all I'm going to do with this other piece here is I'm going to tie a little bit around the top of his head here. So I could do any knot here. I might actually do a clove hitch. So I really suggest if you don't know some of these names of these knots that I'm doing, there's amazing knots that you can learn and it's, it's really good to know actually what knot to use in what situation. So for me, I know that a clove hitch is a really good knot here. Craft Lab NZ's got their very own app, which is really cool, and on there is a whole knot tutorial section. Okay, so now I've tied that around its little head here. I'm going to snip off that little bit so, like so. So all I'm going to do now is I can actually, I can, if I hold this too much to one side, you'll see it's off 
off angle a little bit. So I'm going to try and balance it up there with my back one. And then with my front one, I'm going to try and pull it up until I sort of have a look at it and I go, oh yeah, that looks awesome. Once I've got that and I've got those three those pieces there, I'm just going to put all of those pieces together and tie an overhand knot. So any knot will work here, just a little overhand knot. And at this point here, your beautiful bird is done. So something amazing about this, this is almost, when you fly this in the wind or you tie it up on a tree and you put it somewhere where the wind can get to it, it'll always turn and it flies into the wind. So it's absolutely beautiful. What we're gonna do right now is we're gonna use another piece of harakiki. So I've just got a scrap piece here that I'm gonna make pretty thin. I'm gonna tie one end onto my stick like so. So again, a clove hitch is just the absolute best knot for me to tie here. So I'm gonna tie a little knot on here. And then the other end of this, I'm actually gonna tie on to my beautiful top of my bird. So again, this knot that I'm gonna to choose to do now is a sheet bend, which is a super, super cool knot. So now I've actually got this attached to my beautiful bit of harakiki flower stem. So let's go outside and see how it flies. So we're out now on the farm. It's probably gonna be quite windy, but have a look at this. So I've got my beautiful bird here, and purely just by holding it, my thumb starts to fly. Woohoo! So now, if I was to start swinging it around, I can make this beautiful bird fly. Whoa! It's like, it's like flying the most amazing kite, but you actually get to control what it does. So we're gonna fly and let's do some more flying around and around. Woohoo! We're gonna try and do a 360. Whoa! So there can be absolutely hours of fun flying this beautiful, beautiful bird. So from OM at Craft Lab NZ, I hope you enjoyed this video. Stay safe. Bye -bye.